Hey guys, Toby Morrison here from CFS Health. I just wanted to do this quick video on CFS symptoms because I see a lot of people, even more so every single year, uh, get sick with chronic fatigue syndrome. And I think it's good to know what, what the symptoms are, especially when it's new to you and you don't necessarily know what it's like and it's, it's it's really scary when all of a sudden you have an onset of symptoms that you've never had before or never experienced and it can almost feel quite alienating in the sense that you know what is happening to me so uh, I've got a list here which is actually derived from my website safeshealth.com and you can check that out but I'm going to read out a couple of things and I guess what I want to share with you is that it's absolutely normal to experience these symptoms from time to time but what's important is it's not about necessarily treating the symptoms, but more importantly, treating the underlying issues of why the symptoms are arising. Symptoms are usually just a feedback mechanism to say, hey, uh, this is not working or something's not quite right. Uh, what can you do about it? Uh, and it's really fascinating. I'll share with you some more information at the end of this video. So, brain fog, irritability, dizziness, Disrupted sleep patterns. This is a huge one with chronic fatigue syndrome where most people perceive that having chronic fatigue syndrome would mean that you sleep all day. Now initially, especially from a post-viral syndrome or uh, you know, glandular fever or, or mono, what can happen is we get super tired, the body shuts down and, and you do sleep for a long period of time. You're completely exhausted. Okay. Now, that doesn't last forever. There's certain cycles with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and one of the cycles is the reverse where you're tired but wired all the time. You're constantly, uh, you're just constantly tired but you can't fall asleep. You can't have a good quality sleep. And one of the myths about uh, chronic fatigue syndrome is that, or, you know, the misperceptions is that, uh, you know, you just, you just sleep. But the problem is even if you do sleep and get a good quality night's sleep, you could still wake up unrefreshed and, and you know still have that onset of symptoms that you're struggling with. So um, chronic fatigue syndrome is something you can't sleep off, so to speak. Uh, and that's something that you could remind your family members or people who are around you who uh, you know don't understand what's going on with you. Sore eyes uh, and sensitive, you know, light sensitivity. So you know, um, even staring at a screen for a period of time can be uh, hard for you sometimes. Muscle spasms, muscular aches and pains, and this goes in with fibromyalgia too. So if you're constantly feeling achy and uh, you, your joints are aching and your muscles are sore and painful, uh, this is a symptom, especially leg pain. Um, that's a really common one with, with clients out there too. Sore throat, you know, flu-like symptoms, tender lymph nodes, so those lymph nodes that go through here and also through your armpits and your groin region. Um, you know, it, it almost feels like a constant flu um, that's like 24/7 that you can't get out of, even though that you're actually that you actually don't have the flu. So um, these are again just some of the symptoms that you can experience from time to time. We've got insomnia, which I spoke about before, that sleep pattern cycle. Because the sleep uh, pattern is disrupted, that means that the, the the rhythm of the sleep pattern is all over the place, and therefore that when you do go to bed at night, your body kind of you know almost wakes up. Uh, and then your mind starts to go, you know, 10 million miles an hour as well, which can be difficult to deal with. Secondary anxiety and secondary depression. I say secondary because I think it's really important to realise that depression and anxiety is not the cause of chronic fatigue syndrome, but secondary anxiety and depression can definitely be a part of it because, of course, you're going to be struggling, uh, you know, physically but also emotionally. If you can't do what you once were able to do, that's really, you know, difficult to, I guess, accept, right? So that's something that we can talk about too. Here we have deconditioned muscles. That's one of the biggest things I say with my clients is they come in and they're very weak. They can't uh, do what they normally would do as a healthy person. So their muscles start to deteriorate. Uh, they lose muscle but then can gain fat as well depending on the person usually t uh, females typically gain weight males typically lose weight uh, but again it's different for each case um, you know I've written here weight loss and weight gain and it could be quite rapid we've also got nausea diarrhea constipation lots of gut, is gut issues so obviously the immune system uh, is linked to the gut big time so you know gut disturbances are quite common uh, intolerances 
and things of that nature can be a part of the problem. We've also got lack of appetite uh, or the opposite, can, that can be true too. Inability to adapt to weather and uh, temperature changes, which is very common for people. And also sensitivity around food, smell, light, sound and medication. And, and that's just really a small list of um, symptoms we could go on for hours probably talking about it. But, you know, another thing is, you know, like I said, sore throat, bad memory, difficulty uh, concentrating and cognitive kind of control. So uh, things like reading a book or, or concentrating in a conversation can be quite hard too. So these are just some of the things that you should be aware of to know that it is, it is part of the symptom, uh, set of symptoms that you can experience with chronic fatigue syndrome. But remember, as you get healthy, these symptoms dissolve. Because a healthy person doesn't really have symptoms. It's usually a feedback mechanism, right? So just remember that it's not going to last forever. And if you do the right things to help yourself, then you can notice improvements and changes in your condition and quality of life. And that's what I'm all about. That's what I teach to all my uh, clients and students around the world because it's really important just to not get stuck in the symptom cycle that you think that it's a never ending cycle and you're constantly in that boom and bust cycle where you push yourself and then crash and then that's another symptom in itself um, feeling of bodily discomfort medically called malaise so post-exertion uh, post malaise uh, or PEM you can call it is where you do something physically and then within you know anywhere from hours to days uh, or even a couple of days in a row, you will have a setback or crash. So you, you push yourself, you, you have that stress stimulation in your body, and then all of a sudden you crash. So that's post-exertion malaise. Um, and that's really hard and difficult with exercise because on one hand we need to condition the body, but then if we push it too hard, then uh, we can actually set off more symptoms and um, prolong the recovery period. So it's important to listen to your body, but more importantly, have a specific plan for you to help you get from where you're at to where you want to be, okay? I hope that helps. I'm gonna roll up a couple more. Uh, I've already said muscle aches and pains. I think that's a really big one. Um, but also things like headaches and brain fog, and, and again, that cognitive control is, is really difficult to uh, comprehend sometimes because like I said, it, 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 it's a, multifaceted illness that needs to be multifaceted in terms of help and support um, and that's why you need to look at everything on a broad spectrum uh, spectrum not just physically but also emotionally and mentally because as I said you know this this you know illness CFS or ME or whatever you want to call it is really consuming and it can and it really takes away your whole life and uh, that's what it was like for me when I was ill with it 10 years ago same thing with many of my clients it literally you know, all these amazing things, they were working so hard and pushing themselves and, you know, at, at, at the top of their game and then all of a sudden CFS comes and, you know, literally it's like sweeping the um, rug from underneath your feet. And so it's a really hard thing to deal with uh, emotionally and physically uh, when, you, when that happens to you. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some sort of, you know, understanding of what it's kind of like. Just remember, CFS now, uh, has to persist for more than two months with uh, a set of more than six to eight symptoms. I've written here on the website. You can go to www.cfshelp.com and check out what is CFS. Um, the, the diagnosis has changed a lot. It used to be a six month waiting period where your symptoms would have to persist for more than six months and your, uh, your doctor would have to exclude any other illnesses in that period of time. Things like diabetes, cancer, um, some serious illnesses. So. You know, uh, this is up there in terms of uh, one of the more serious, un, you know, unknown kind of um, illnesses out there that uh, can really affect not only the person but also the family members and friends and also social settings. But just remember, it can get better. Um, you know, you're looking at a guy who's fully recovered now for over 10 years, uh, and you know, that's our job to help people recover and get their uh, life back too. Well, that was a bit of lining there, so. I hope that helps. Woo. I don't know if you could hear that storm, but there's a storm brewing right now. I better go. All the best. If you want more information and you need more help, there's some fantastic, helpful articles for free on our website at cfshealth.com. Chuck in your uh, email. You'll also get um, sent a, a list of a, a checklist to help you get started on what not to do in order to help you with your recovery. So I hope that helps. Uh, all the best for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.